Welcome to another Algolab lesson. Today we will look at another workflow for another market, namely gold. Gold is a very popular market, creating long trends and strategies on it tend to generate relatively consistent profits. Today we will show you a workflow that is part of the default strategy one installation. We include it there so that you have workflows available that you can start profiting from right away. So let's go over it. Before we begin, let's download the updated data. We go to Data Manager, find the Ducas Copy Broker Profile, and here you can see this symbol. This symbol is pre-configured specifically for the Ducas Copy Broker. If you use different one, use the broker profile corresponding to your broker that you're using. So I select this symbol and download the data. While the data is downloading, I will explain the workflow. We will start with the first task, Build. We build strategies from our template, which we created in Algolab. We will build long-only strategies, use SQX signals, genetics, and one or two entry conditions with a max shift value of 3 and indicated values between 14 and 400. We use stop loss based on fixed pips, percentages, and also ATR, and analogically look for 2 to 3 times the stop loss value as take profit, percentage values from 0.8 to 2% and 2 to 5 times the ATR value. For a stop loss and take profit, please note, just as we explained in the data lesson, that if you want to build strategies for Darwin X, for example, you will set one less zero here. As we mentioned, Ducas copy quotes with three decimal places, so these values must be used here. We use the basic genetic settings, so we will not change anything. We use these data settings meaning from 2014 to mid 2022. We use these values for engine testing, spread, average slippage, commission settings. And we will also use the first auto sample, meaning approximately 22% of this data. We built intraweek strategies, meaning with exits on Friday, and all positions will be closed at 20.40, so 8.40 p.m. broker server time. The market session will also be automatically selected here. We use the default blocks, but I recommend that if you run multiple generations, you slightly change the input blocks with each generation to achieve different entry conditions. If you use a trailing stop, don't forget to adjust the fixed pip values and, if necessary, the price level. I will use the ATR value here. So let's move on. We will not use ATM and we will use fixed money management 0.1 lot. Moving on, we have the cross checks tab. Here, we test the strategies with higher accuracy, meaning 1 minute accuracy or 1 minute precision, using these criteria. If a strategy does not meet these values at a minute precision, it is automatically rejected. Thanks to this setting, the build is faster, but strategies are still validated at higher precision so that our backtest remains precise. The last step is ranking. Here, we set the number of strategies to be stored in the databank, and these ranking options are applied. This means that we want strategies to achieve at least an average of two trades per month, have a profit factor of, of 1.3, a written drawdown ratio of 4, and at least 50 trades in the in sample. Sometimes strategies generate too few trades. So this is the build strategies task. I will just add that if you have limited memory, like 8 gigabytes or less, Set this value to 500. If you have more memory, for example 32 or 64 gigabytes, you can increase this value. Strategic One stores all values in memory to work with them faster, but this means you must control how many results you store, otherwise you may run into stability issues. For now, I will leave this value as it is. Now let's quickly go through the entire workflow. In the first task, we adjust the out of sample values and take the value we set during the build. I will copy this date and reset the data because we updated them and insert the value we set during the build. Here we will work only with one minute precision and discard all strategies that are not profitable. We repeat the same in the second task, testing strategies from 2006 onward. Data before 2006 is not of the best quality, but if you want, you can set the value from 2003. Here, 
we evaluate all strategies that are not profitable in this period, or more precisely, those that have a profit factor of at least 1.1. Next, we test the strategies on the M30 timeframe, so 30 minute timeframe, and here we set the entire value. We reset the dates to the current date. We set the same for the backtest on a higher time frame. Again, we reset the dates, set the star date, and eliminate all strategies that are not profitable. In the slippage task, we again reset the dates and test how sensitive the strategies are to slippage. Here, we set the value to 1500. If you have a Darwinex broker, reduce this value by 1 0, so 150. Again, we filter out strategies that are not profitable. And this brings us to the last task in this workflow, testing for parameter changes. We reset the dates again, and in the cross-check robustness tab, we test 30 simulations with a probability of 10% and a maximum change of 20%. If you have a more powerful computer, you can set a higher number of simulations or add another task. First, test 30 simulations, then a higher number, because the Monte Carlo test is quite demanding. When you look at ranking options, here we eliminate strategies that have a confidence level of at least 50% of the original return drawdown ratio value of the Monte Carlo simulations. As a part of this task, we use clear data banks where the strategies are first stored in the results data bank and all final strategies that went through all the tests are moved to the final strategies data bank where they are stored after Monte Carlo validation. Once the last task is complete, the workflow is set to run in a loop, meaning that once the entire workflow finishes and the strategies are tested, the data bank is cleared and the whole process runs repeatedly until you stop it manually. So when you start a build, the final data bank will contain your final strategies. I will now start a workflow and you can do the same. Then you can follow the processes we described in Algolab. And that's actually all for this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I will see you next time.